Today, we're going to look at the design and optimization of a mechanical resonator using ANSYS AIM. Here, we're starting from Siemens NX. In addition to the geometry, we also define specific simulation parameters inside Siemens NX. The ANSYS Direct interface with Siemens NX allows us to bring in both the geometry as well as these parameters to perform parametric simulations and design optimization. ANSYS AIM will automatically link to any active CAD sessions you have open on your desktop. Any modifications or changes to the geometry can quickly be imported into the simulation for analysis. Here, we're performing a modal analysis on a mechanical resonator with leaf springs on either side. Parametric dimensions from NX are imported automatically and flagged as design parameters by clicking on the adjacent P button. The springs on either side of the resonators are shells, and here we're defining a shell thickness. We can parameterize this value as well as a part of our design optimization study. Resonator designers typically want a specific resonant frequency on their device. Furthermore, it's important to tune this resonant frequency such that it resonates in the proper direction and minimize resonance in other directions. Here we're generating the interfaces between the different parts. ANSYS automatically detects all of the contacts in the model. Because we're using shell elements, it detects surface-to-surface -surface contacts as well as edge-to-surface and edge-to-edge -edge contacts. The only ones we need here are the surface ones, so we'll delete the extraneous contacts. The material here is assumed to be structural steel, and the only other thing we need to set up for a modal analysis are supports. Here we're fixing the anchor points of our device. Small modal analyses like this runs very quickly, which makes it very suitable for design iteration and optimization studies. Let's look at some of the resonant frequencies and the mode shapes. In this particular design, the first resonant frequency is a vertical y-axis displacement, which is typically not what you want for this type of leaf spring design. The second resonant frequency is a torsional mode around the z-axis, while the third resonant frequency is the x-direction vibration that we're looking for for this particular design. Certainly, a lot of things need to be changed to improve the performance of this particular design. ANSYS AIM allows you to define a wide range of input parameters, from geometry parameters in Siemens NX to loads, boundary conditions, even materials. We can also define output parameters. In this case, we're defining both the average absolute displacement value in the X direction for each mode, as well as a resonant frequency. The idea here is that we want to identify which mode is in the X direction, as well as the resonant frequency of that mode. We're setting these parameters for the first three modes, and hopefully we'll get a design such that the first resonant frequency is a high value that's also in the X direction. Going to the ANSYS project page allows us to open up the parameter set. Here we can review our parametric settings. There are three input parameters and six output parameters. To explore the design space, we're going to use our Response Surface Space Design Optimization Tool. We start by specifying a lower and upper bound for each parameter. This allows ANSYS to, to create a design of experiment matrix that covers our design space. Once our initial design of experiment matrix is completed, we can create the response surface. 
Kansas uses a genetic aggregation approach to create response surfaces. Response surfaces are equations that interpolate between the points of simulation that we perform, thereby giving a continuous curve rather than discrete points of data for our design space. We started with a minimal set of design of, of experiment points. This means our initial response surface may not be a good representation of the design space. However, ANSYS design exploration allows you to add additional verification points. These verification points are automatically run and compared with the response surface to see how good the prediction is compared to the simulation results. In this case, we have some error, as shown by points that lies away from the diagonal line. In order to improve our response surface, we can copy these verification points and define them as refinement points. Refinement points are used to update the response surface, thereby providing a better estimate of the design space. This process can be repeated in order to achieve an accurate response surface. In addition, ANSYS provides a wide range of other tools, for example, genetic algorithm as well as direct optimization to ensure more accurate forms of optimization study. However, the response surface approach provides an excellent global view of the overall system performance. In the optimization section, we're going to define some basic objectives and constraints. We're looking for a large displacement in the first mode in the x-direction. This will indicate the first mode is moving in the x-direction. We're also maximizing the first mode resonant frequency. Using the screening method, we're going to pick 4,000 designs randomly from the response surface and try to do an optimization study as well as design exploration based on this set of data. There are a wide range of other optimization methods available inside ANSYS. The results we have here are candidate points, trade-off plot, sample, as well as sensitivity. The trade-off plot shows that there are a set of large displacement designs where the resonance frequency is fairly high. The sensitivity plot shows how each output parameter is affected by each of the input parameters. Larger bars shows a more of a reaction, whereas smaller bars shows less sensitivity. The most useful plot in this case is the sample plot. Here we have 4,000 designs shown as lines. Each vertical column represents a particular parameter. We're filtering out here designs with a small displacement for the first resonant frequency in the x-axis. This means that we're identifying designs where the first resonant frequency is in the x-axis. Once we've identified a candidate design, we can click on it and get the input as well as output parameter predictions in the site panel. In addition, we can insert this as a design point. So rather than using an interpolated value from our response surface, we could run this particular design and see how it performs in an actual simulation. This is design selected from our design exploration program. ANSYS AIM allows to store a number of design points within the same project. Here we're going to flag our new design as the current design. Looking at the results shows that indeed the first resonant frequency is a vibration in the x-axis and it is at a frequency of 2281 hertz. 